Well, hi there. This is Scott Duffy from GetCloudSkills.com. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Azure Certification Renewal Process. I'm going to talk about my experience, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Let's go. Now, first of all, if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button and the subscribe button as well. That would be much appreciated. So let's talk about the reality of Microsoft certifications. Now, it used to be that you would get a two year expiration period for taking an Azure certification. And they recently changed that to a one year period. So whether you're coming to the end of your two years or your one year, you're going to get an email such as this to remind you that your certification expires in 180 days. That's plenty of time to get this certification renewal. And it's of course free. So if you do click the link inside of that email, it takes you to the renewal page within the Microsoft Learn website. You do have to be logged into the account that you use for your Microsoft certification. So if that's different than what you use for email or Azure or other things, make sure you're on the right page. You can see when your certification expires and there's the button that says take the renewal assessment. Now I will say first green check mark says that the overall interface for testing was very simple. It is not like the Pearson view interface where you can mark questions and go back on questions and reviews and surveys and all of this. It's purely asking questions with and getting answers. So I really did like the simplicity of the interface. Now in my certification it might be different in yours. I got 28 multiple choice questions. So all of the questions were multiple choice. There were no drag and drop, no drop down list box, none of the uh, case study questions, none of those complex questions you'll find on a real certification test. This was purely question with three or four possible answers. Choose the next one, hit next. You can't go back, fairly simple. And again, I think I really liked that interface for the simplicity. One thing that I noticed was that a lot of the questions, I would say even the majority of the questions, what I would call practical scenarios. And what that means is the question might say, you have resource group RG1, you have VNet, VNet1, you have two virtual machines, VM1 and VM2, and then it'll ask you a question based on that layout. And so there's no diagrams or, or pictures but it is trying to get you into the headspace of you're having these resources, they have names, and which of the following resources can do the following task, and you have A, B, C, or D to choose between the answers. The other thing that I liked was that if you did fail your assessment the first time, let's say you just go through it with no preparation, you just sit down and do it, well, if you wanted to, you could just retake it again immediately. There's no waiting for the first retry. Green check mark for me on that. I think that was a pretty cool thing not to try to penalize people for trying to get the assessment as quickly as possible. Now, if you fail the second time, you do have to wait 24 hours or till the next day, I guess, to take the test for the third time. So in that 180 days, if you do start out uh, to do your assessment renewal fairly early, well, then you have plenty of chances to pass. Now we're going to get to the first, I would call it a question mark. I'm not going to ever say it's something's bad or terrible, but um, I did find a few of the questions. Let's say on my 28 questions, maybe four or five questions really caused me to scratch my head and try to say, what are they really asking here? because it would ask me a question and I would say, okay, I think I know what the answer to this is. And then I would read the four options and none of the four options really mapped to what I thought the answer was in my head. And so when you get that situation where it's like, how do you do X? And you go, oh yeah, you do this. And then you look at the four answers and you're like, huh, none of them say what I think I know what the answer is. So um, now that might be me. So perhaps in 100% of those cases, uh, I was mistaken. The, if you knew what you're talking about, those questions were clearly worded. But I suspect that the questions could be reviewed one more time and force maybe some fairness some clarity. Maybe there's a wording that they were asking something, but I interpreted the question to be something else. 
there's who knows what the thing is, but I think a couple of the questions were, let's shall we say, not as clear as they could be. The next thing I might suggest to the team is that, well, there was one particular case, at least, where they asked a question that was pretty clear. So the question was, you know, I'm not going to say what the question was, but the question was pretty clear. And the answers, I didn't know the answer. I looked at it and I said, man, I've never... I've never dealt with this before, and I, I, I would be a 100% pure guess. I couldn't even eliminate a single of the answers, so it was a 25% shot to get it right. And after the test was over, and I said, I wonder what the answer to that was, because it was such a clear question. I remember the question, and I went and looked it up and could not find the answer. I looked through all the docs. I found the page relating to the topic. There's one single paragraph on that page that tells you a little bit of detail about what they were asking, but it didn't go into even enough detail to be able to answer the question. And so on the one hand, I thought, well, that's kind of not great that you can't get the answer to one of these assessment questions from the Microsoft website. Like you, I literally could not find the answer written in plain text on Microsoft docs. But the perhaps the the positive side of that is that that means you did need to have hands-on experience to be able to have understood what the answer to that question was because it's not written down. So that to me is um, good and a bad together. That's why it's not a pure, purely bad thing. But a question where you can't find the answer just by reading docs means you have to have hands-on experience. The downside perhaps to that is it means that the question's quite obscure, right? If you can't find the answer on the internet and you actually have to be in to the command line doing something to see what the exact wording it is that you get back, then that might be too far on the difficulty scale, maybe. But I will say overall, so this that was the good and the bad, overall, the entire assessment was easy to do. I sat down, I ran through it once, uh, really particularly easy. I liked the interface. And despite those uh, couple of questions that I thought were badly worded, but besides the one that I thought was obscure enough that it wasn't even in Microsoft Docs, the interface and the positivity around that overcomes all of that. Because really, you can just, if you fail it, you can redo it. It doesn't tell you which ones you got wrong, obviously, but if you fail it, you can redo it instantly. You can redo it the next day. You'll overcome the challenges. And it's not even an impossible, it's not like climbing Mount Everest, right? It's not like an impossible challenge that if you fail, it's uh, demoralizing. It's it's a fairly easy um, 30 minutes or 40 minutes to go through this or less. And you can do it twice if uh, a couple of the questions stump you. So to give you some tips at the end here, I will say when you do receive the email, you get that 180 day notice. I would plan to try to take it. Now, maybe not the moment you get it, but keep that in your mind that in this particular month, you do want to go and try the assessment at least once. Because first of all, who knows, you could just pass it, you know, without any preparation. And in that case, it's over and done with. Uh, the second thing is if you do fail, then you do know that you have so many days to to renew and it's uh you can plan accordingly now if you do fail one of the cool things that i didn't mention is that microsoft collects a few of their microsoft learn modules for you and says oh you may want to take the following five modules or whatever they are and it, there's a save button and you can save that to a collection within your own microsoft learn website. So really you take the assessment and then it tells you what you need to improve on and gives you the learning modules to study. Maybe it takes you a couple hours to go through uh, to take the assessment the second time. And that is brilliant, brilliant on their part to tie in Microsoft Learn at the end to uh, help you to improve specific to you, not just generic, go here, take the uh, AZ 104 complete modules, the specific ones that you require. That is brilliant. And my final tip, tip number three, is just to be persistent. You know, don't don't be demoralized. Don't get let down. Don't feel put upon that they're asking you to do this. Uh, do it. There's a. It's actually uh, because it's free and because it's short. It, there's actually um, it's actually rewarding to complete to renew for another year. 
Um, you did do work on it. You did deserve it. You are up to speed on some of those changes within Azure. So I say just keep at it until you overcome and that'll be totally worth it. So at the end of the process, when you take the certification assessment and you pass, you get this a lovely web page that says congratulations you passed and your certification has been extended by a year and then there is the uh, results page which will tell you that you passed it tells you the score and what you got on each of the individual sections and so if you did even if you passed you wanted to go back and find out what you did what you were strong on and what you were weak on then you can go and follow that up too for instance Somehow I only got 50%, I believe, on the on the backup section. So I guess I have to brush up on Azure VM backups and SQL Server backups and things. Probably worth my time as a trainer to get through, get into uh, Azure Site Recovery and uh, play around with that some more. So there's some interesting things here. Anyways, that's my opinion of my experience of taking a renewal assessment. I absolutely encourage you when you do get your email to plan to... Uh, take it within that first month. Don't push it off to the very last minute. And, uh, you know, you too will come at the end with a renewal and perhaps some uh, a good feeling for having passed. This has been Scott Duffy of Get Cloud Skills. Please like the video. I do really appreciate it. It's going to help the video and help the channel. And hit the subscribe button for more Azure certification news and training. Take care.